Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lionberger Construction. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program on Blue Ridge PBS that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region because business matters. I'm Gene Moreno. My guest today is Focus on his own way of job training and creating opportunities for employment, especially for the underserved and those facing special challenges, Richmond Vincent Jr. is President and CEO for Goodwill Industries of the Valleys. And welcome. Pleasure to be here, Gene. Thank you. You uh, started with Goodwill earlier this year. Yes. But you've been in the Goodwill system for a while in other places. I have. I have. I've had the pleasure. I started my Goodwill career in Phoenix, Arizona back in 2010 and served there for six years in a variety of capacities. I started off there developing their fundraising program, but then I took over their workforce development op uh, opportunities, and then I also took over economic development for the organization. And you came out of banking. So I you were in the private industry, bank, commercial banking? Yes, yes, so, you know, I, I was a banker, and uh, you know, it, what's interesting, Gene, is that uh, 2008 really made a lot of bankers really evaluate you know, their, their banking careers right. because it was just a tumultuous period and it was really tough and it was an opportunity for me to look at other opportunities and that's when the Goodwill opportunity came forward and it was just just an opportunity I just could not turn down. Mm. Um, Goodwill, I read something online, Goodwill, the Goodwill mission is described as empowering individuals, strengthening families, inspiring communities. Is that a pretty good summary of what Goodwill is all about? You know, it is a great summary because Gene, it really starts with our vision and our vision is to eliminate poverty. I mean, that is our charge. That's what we do every single day. Everything that we do is always aligned back to are we helping to eliminate poverty in our respective communities? And how we do that is, as you mentioned, there's three ways. There's three, what we call a three-legged stool. It's empowering individuals, it's strengthening families, and it's inspiring communities. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of people, when they think of goodwill, the first thing they think of is the thrift stores. Yes. And you drop your clothes off and and maybe you get a tax deduction, but they sell clothes. But, <laughs> but, but talk about the core, uh, the training people for jobs. You know, how many people in a typical year will you train? What kind of skills? And, and what are some of the demographics of the people that Goodwill Industries of the Valleys trains? That's right. Great question. And you're, you're right. You know, our retail stores, that is, you know, really our, you know, what you see in terms of, of our brand. And that's good because that is the engine that fuels everything that we do. So we have 41 retail stores throughout Southwest Virginia, from Charlottesville down to Galax, to Danville, Lynchburg, Harrisonburg. So we are very, very positioned throughout, the, um, throughout our territory. But those stores represent employment. So we have well over 1,000 employees amongst our, amongst our team. So think about that from an employment perspective, a thousand individuals. Just for Goodwill. Just, just for Goodwill alone, who otherwise may not be employed if Goodwill did not exist. So, mm -hmm. you know, we see ourselves as a major, major employer, and, but we also have diverse employment. So what folks may see is these stores, but we also have our workforce development, which we have roughly about 100 team members there, but we also have a manufacturing arm. So we actually manufacture um, the filters for aquariums and you know we have close to almost 100 employees tied to that business alone where are they working out of which place they are working out of radford okay and they're also working out of our melrose campus as Unreal. well okay. but a very diversified model in terms of how we generate revenue to then provide the workforce services um, that we offer and you mentioned yes we you know we start and we look at it from a multi-generational approach meaning we want to start pre-birth and help individuals all the way to that point where they'll be blessed, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, we offer services for our youth, which we have a youth headquarters at our Melrose campus, but we also do summer youth programs, summer employment programs. We just did a great program down in Danville for summer youth. It was actually recognized by the governor uh, who recognized us for doing just a really good job of keeping youth focused, focused on acquiring those job skills. Mm -hmm. uh, we, have, we have programs for our adults. We have a reentry program, helping those folks who are coming out of incarceration prepare for and, and acquire work. And one of my favorite programs is we have a senior program. It's called the Senior Community Service and Employment Program. It's designed for seniors over the age of 55, which I'm getting close to and looking forward to it. But it's a great program that helps train seniors 
up to four years, we can train them, and it's a paid program. So seniors actually receive a, uh, a uh, paycheck for training. What types of jobs for the seniors? It, it, it's a, it, 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 can, uh, it goes across the gamut. So, you know, for example, we have in our own office, we have about five seniors who are training to be administrative assistants, receptionists, and then we can also place them in other organizations. So we also have one of our participants working at the rescue mission, helping those folks. And what, why this program is great, Gene, is it, because it allows them the time to learn the job before they're hired on permanently. Mm -hmm. I mean, what better way can you do pay training, get a chance to, to build your, school, your skills as you ramp up, and then uh, eventually get the job working at that organization. Mm -hmm. But before I forget, talk about uh, Richmond, the swath of that goodwill industry of the valleys uh, covers, because it's a, quite a large area. Yeah, it, well, it's a very large area. There's a lot of, there's a lot of windshield time, yeah, so right. to speak, that we have. But, you know, so, you know, think about it, Gene. So as we're looking at workforce development and really building communities, we have got to be very um, specific to that, that particular community. Because what is what works in Charlottesville mm -hmm. may not work in Lynchburg. It may not work in Roanoke. So we have to be very specific in those respective territories to focus our services there, right? And so, you know, so when you think about our services, think about it from a holistic standpoint of, again, from birth to that senior. And that's what we're looking at in every single community. How do we plug in? Some communities, we do more than other communities, but it just depends on what that community needs. For example, Roanoke is a little bit more mature, a lot more organizations. So we don't have to be the main provider of multiple services. We just plug in to what's going on. And that's how we really fit into the respective communities uh, throughout our territory. You know, you, since you mentioned that, one of the things you said w while we were getting ready is that you, uh, now that you've been here a while, you want to start really connecting yes. maybe Richmond with some of these smaller organizations that are sort of moving in the same direction you are, trying to train people, coach yes. people, trying to get them in the jobs, trying to get them on the right path. Talk about that. You said that you might be rolling out a plan. You no, know, we are. We are. Well, actually, we are going to roll out a plan. So over the past three months, we have been engaging in a very comprehensive strategic planning process. And what we did a little bit differently than we've done in the past is we included folks from outside the organization. Typically, you should do your plan, you get your, your senior team in, and you all think about it, and you come up with a plan. We didn't do that. We leveraged our board of directors who were involved, but we called in community partners throughout our territory. So we brought in the Virginia Partnership from Charlottesville. We brought in Annette from TAP and Abby from uh, the United Way. And then we brought folks in from down in Danville to figure out how do we begin to build this type of collaboration? And so when we talk about the collaboration, it's really looking at our communities and building a plan for those communities. Not just working together, because we all, we all work together now. That's, we all do a really good job of working together, but we want to work together for a common goal. That and can be tough sometimes when any yeah. business, well, you know, you, everyone's got their silo, they, they're a little you know, playpen, so <laughs> getting people to work together. It's, you know, it, it's, it's always challenging. You know, the intent, is, is well-meaning, so we really want to do it, but many times, whether it's our funding or our own focuses, it takes us down a road that doesn't always, you know, give the opportunity for us to collaborate. So we're going to really work hard on how we accomplish that, and so I see us making, we've already made some headways there, and so I see us doing that, but the challenge for us is how do we do that in such a large territory? And so that's where, you know, a really a lot of resource development, because it's going to take a lot of uh, capital for us to be able to do that mm -hmm. effectively in all of our territory. Any, anything from your previous Goodwill positions that will come in handy as you try to network everybody together? You know, yes. You know, I, I would tell you both in Phoenix and in Mississippi, which is where I came from before I, I came here to Roanoke, is, you know, once we got a, a plan together, a community plan, we were able to leverage all of our strengths to accomplish a desired goal. And I think having seen it happen and be successful is, I think, helps bring some sort of um, credibility that, yes, this can work. And so I think that's where I think PASS uh, will help. And, you know, I also say, Gene, you know, I think experience being in the private sector helps as well because it helps, you know, be able to, to uh, bring the two together because we can do all the amazing job training that we want but we got to get those folks jobs. 
and we've got to understand it from the aspect of the employer. ROI. Yes, we have to do that. And so that's where I think that connectivity for me and mem members of my staff who've also been in the private sector as well. Mm -hmm. You know, go, go back to training programs. Um, what, is, what did COVID do, Richmond, anything as far as training programs? Did it alter some of the programs? Uh, did it kind of push them into a different direction to fill some needs out there? You know, COVID was very challenging, you know, trying to do, uh, you know, human services and case management via Zoom is really tough, you know, but our, our, t our team adjusted. And, you know, there are some programs where we had, a, you know, where we, we had a push off because, you know, the, you know, some of our, our population that we serve, you know, we serve some of the folks who, are, you know, have significant disabilities. Well, those folks couldn't come in. And so we had to, you know, kind of push that to the side mm -hmm. And until we got through, you know, to COVID and reopened. Um, but I will tell you, though, it's helped expedite, I think, a, a different way to communicate. So, for example, we have individuals who are in rural communities who in the past we couldn't serve because it was like, well, we can't have a brick and mortar facility in that community. But now we can access them through, you know, media such as Zoom or Teams or things like that. So. In, in, in essence, it's, it kind of created a, a short barrier, but now it's created an opportunity for us to now better communicate effectively throughout our entire territory, whether you can get to our building or not, mm -hmm. we can now come to you. It's funny how many people, politicians, whatever businesses have, have discovered Zoom and Teams and all that, and uh, it's made life easier in some ways for media people. Yes. Um, and as long as they can get broadband. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. is a challenge. That is, yes, you're right, you're correct. And that's why we are really, you know, advocates of um, you know you know the state investing into you know a much more broader uh, broadband network to really get to the because we have a number of rural communities that do not have access and do not do not have reliable uh, you know uh, internet so mm -hmm. that's important. Um, some of your training programs do you, are there specific training programs Richmond where you're dialoguing dialoguing with local manufacturers or companies and say hey we need people trained to do this we need people trained as you know in nurse companionship or, or uh, manufacturing this, are there programs that are tailored to what people are asking for locally? Yes, uh, that is our, one, of, one of our programs is our Project Search program. That is a program that we have partnered with Carillion Clinic. And so we are working on training um, our team members on occupations that are related to the, to the healthcare field. And um, so that's one, and that's really working with our folks with disabilities. Those are our, our clients with disabilities. Um, we also have our Good Care program, and Good Care also works with not only Carillion, but it works with other medical institutions to help individuals start medical careers starting from a CA, CNA all the way to being a registered nurse. And so those occupations are still in high demand at this point. And now with the uh, you know, uptick with the Delta variant, there's becoming more and more of a, of a need for uh, you know, nursing professionals, but also just healthcare professionals in general. So that's a program that we really tailor. And in fact, Gene, so initially that program was publicly funded. Good Care. Yeah, Good Care was publicly funded. So that funding ended on September 30th, but now we're gonna fund it ourselves. And that to me, that, that's the big advantage of a Goodwill and these retail stores is now we can take a signature program that has done amazing work and now we're gonna fund it. So really, you know, you look at the period where it was publicly funded, it's kind of that startup phase, right? The, kind of that was, startup it, was it funded last year during? Yes. Okay, it just started last year. Well, the funding has been going on for several years okay. through a federal grant. But then when that grant uh, concluded, we said, you know what, this program is outstanding. It has excellent outcomes. It, um, it aligns with the emerging uh, jobs in this community. And so we said, now, now we will invest into this program. And you know, that's a shift for us um, as Goodwill, because uh, you know, in the past, many of our programs were publicly funded. Now we're saying, instead of us looking at the funding and then the program, we're gonna look at it from a different perspective. We're gonna look at it and say, what does the community need? What is the need in this community? Then we will fund that either through our retail revenue, either through philanthropy, or we'll go out and find other public funding that totally aligns with that particular service. Being more efficient. Being more efficient, but then we can accomplish the outcomes that are important to the community. Because sometimes when you have this federal program, it's such a blanket approach, it doesn't fit what we need in Roanoke. 
Mm -hmm. So now we're saying, what does Roanoke need? And then we'll provide, no, then we'll develop that program around that, and then we'll fu we'll fund it either internally or we'll go out externally and, and fund those programs. Well, also, you know, if you have some success stories, Richmond, with the money you've spent on a program, mm -hmm. it 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 maybe make let, lets more people open their wallets. They can see that the return on investment has been good for the programs that you're, you're zeroing in on. Absolutely, and it allows us not to duplicate services, because that's one of the things that you know, is important for us is that we're not doing something that another nonprofit is doing. So maybe what needs to be done in that community right now isn't being funded. So for, I'll give you an example. You know, we've gotten a lot of feedback from uh, community members, especially with the public school system, about internships for youth. Right? How can we get youth? And when I say internship, I'm talking 14, 15 year olds, which is very, very hard to do because most employers don't allow right. employment for under 16, but we can do an internship. So we are looking at, okay, how do we now take that and marry that up with some of the other programs? But now we're giving these 14 and 15 year olds the opportunity for career exploration. So wouldn't it be a great opportunity to have a young 14 year old work in the marketing department or work in the communications department, right? Or work in our finance department to see, wow, this can be an occupation for me. This is a goal that I want to achieve and now I can pursue that goal and hopefully stay in school, go on to higher education mm -hmm. and again, enjoy a very uh, you know, prominent career. Some of those 14 year olds could probably help a nonprofit build their website or oh, social media. Yes, they can, <laughs> <laughs> yes they can. And that's the youth in internship program. Is that off the ground yet? It is not off the ground yet. We are still in the development stages, um, but it's just one example of how we when we when we fund these programs ourselves, how it can really be customized to exactly what the community needs. And again, this internship program came about from the feedback from community partners, from from the business community, and um, also from um, the uh, the K through 12 education system. Hmm. Yes. You know, the, uh, Richmond, talk about the you touched on it a bit, but talk about the typical person that's coming to Goodwill for job training. I mean. Um, there's people with physical challenges, people yes. you said that have been incarcerated, but, but are these sort of people that have been, you know, maybe not, don't have the best education, but tell, who's the typical person coming to Goodwill for training? You know, great question because it ranges. It's such a far ranging uh, demographic of folks who come and see us. You know, you know we, we start off with youth. We have youth who come to us for, again, career exploration. They come to us for after school education. And so, so we have that youth element. And an adult, it can, it can range. It can be an adult who's coming out of incarceration, who's saying, hey, I don't know where to start. Can you help me get going? And so they go through our reentry program. It could be uh, someone with a, a severe disability. And you know, their end game is not necessarily to be employed, but you know, it's to live life to this fullest potential each and every day. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is also part of our mission and part of who the individuals that we serve. And then you could have, you know, the single mother who's looking for opportunities um, for herself, but then saying, hey, how do, how do we leverage, leverage that for my child as well? And so, so, Gene, it really ranges the gamut on the demographic of the folks. Mm -hmm. So I would say just about everyone. We've even had individuals who are professionals who've been displaced because of COVID who said, you know, I had a job for 25 years. I never had to apply. I never had to prepare my resume. I never had to look. Now I'm displaced, I don't know where to start. And so they'll come to us and then we'll help them uh, along that continuum mm -hmm. and hopefully at some point connect them back into that professional uh, occupation. And you have people there that can counsel people when they first come in, like an intake, that let them kind of steer them in the right direction? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, at Melrose campus, we have a career center there that's right on campus. So you have walk-ins that can come in and be assisted, again, by building a resume, interview coaching, helping them connect to employment opportunities. And so we have that right on site, both here in Roanoke at a Melrose campus, and also in Danville, we have a career center as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems to be, you hear about the ongoing worker shortage, you know. Oh, yes. Well, unemployment's coming down, but there's a worker shortage. So it would seem to me that this should be a good time for Goodwill Industries of the Valleys as far as training people and a good time for people to get in the programs. That's right. You know, well, Gene, it, it is, and, and it's also a challenge. Because um, I would tell you, even as an employer, 
we're challenged with that, that issue. Finding enough people? Yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely. And so, yes, we are training, you know, I would say the same number of individuals, um, but there's still a shortage. We're just not being able to train enough to fill the jobs that we have. And so, you know, we're facing that, that same issue in terms of finding um, good employees, which, you know, is a, good, is a good tale, I think, for all of us employers to make sure that we are doing the best for our, our team members. And I tell you, Gene, over the past several months, we have really focused inward as much as we have outward. And we we're going through what I would call kind of a metamorphosis of mission integration, meaning we treat our team members internally the same way we do our clients. Because it's easy, Gene, to really get so passionate and really dial in to the folks that you serve, right? But sometimes you forget about, hey, are we doing that same type of, of support to our team members? So we really focus internally in terms of being aggressive on our, on our minimum wage. We, you know, we're up to $12. We'll be moving that up again in January. And that's not, we're not doing that because of the state mandate. We're doing it because it's the right thing mm -hmm. to do. And then, but we're also adding internal case managers for our team members because they have challenges. Think about the people that we hire, the same people we serve. Mm -hmm. So they have challenges and barriers to, to life too. So now we're building the infrastructure internally to be able to serve our team members in the same manner. Keep in mind, we have over thousands of employees. That's a lot so of people. That's yeah. a lot of people. And so they have the same needs as our clients. And so that is something that you will, you will hear a lot about from our, our organization. It's, it's called mission integration. Taking what we do externally and integrating it into what we do internally. And to me, that is gonna be where we are really, really gonna see some mm -hmm. uh, really huge um, gains for us in terms of our team member satisfaction, but also I think how we uh, better serve this community. And if people that work for Goodwill Richmond, if they move on, move up, get into something in private Amen. sector. Amen, yes, you know, yes. That's part of your mission. It, it is, and you know, and, and I'm glad you asked that, Gene, because when you think of Goodwill, you know, when people say, okay, I got your vision, you want to eliminate poverty, I know you want to string, you know, empower individuals, strengthen families, and inspire communities, but what is the true DNA and essence of Goodwill? And it's really helping people achieve their fullest potential. And, you know, we tell our clients that, we also tell our team members in our new hire orientation, Gene, that, hey, you've joined a, an, an amazing organization, but we're gonna challenge you. We're gonna challenge you to be the best that you can be. And sometimes you may not always like it, and sometimes you may not always like us, but we're gonna challenge you to be the best that you can be. And I can tell you, Gene, we live that out. And, you know, it, for me, you know, it harkens me back to my good old athletic days. And I was going to ask you right. about it. You sound you know, like a, a coach, coach there or right? something. Right, you know, you, well, you th well, but think about what coaching is and how, how it manifests itself in, in, in the corporate world. Is really, a coach helps you achieve your fullest potential to achieve the things that you didn't think you could do. And to me, that's what makes Goodwill such a special organization. Mm -hmm. And why, for me, I'm, every day I wake up, I'm so excited to go to work and, and challenge the team to be better than we were yesterday. And we take that same approach with our team members, and we take that same approach with helping our, um, um, our clients who we serve in the community to achieve their fullest potential. And you played wide receiver at Arizona State, and when you started on that whole spiel, I was like, this, this is coming out of a coach's <laughs> mouth or something. But, but did some good life lessons you learned playing football? You know, some great life lessons. You know, it, you know I, I laugh because you know, I have three daughters, my wife, and uh, you know, one, of my, one of my daughters, she's a big football fan, Arizona State fan, of by course. the way. The others cannot stand it. And, <laughs> Right, but what I always told them, it wasn't just about the game which you see, it's about the learnings of that game and the principles that you can apply into work. Because when you think about a football team, it's like work, right? You have different positions, like different departments in an organization, right? You all practice and you work separately, but at times you gotta come together for the common goal to mm -hmm. achieve the, uh, the desired outcome. And so a lot of that is just transferable into the workplace. And the coaching is just, to me, the most prominent element, Gene, of taking from that experience is, you know, you know you, when, I, when I think back, I achieved so much, you know, both as an athlete and also as an individual, as a man. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we look at, you know, I think in, in Goodwill and with our clients is that we're saying, we wanna help build you in your career, but also as an individual as well. And you're the head coach. Right now, I'm the head coach. Yes, I am. We've got about a minute left. I want to ask yes. you real quick. You, you succeeded longtime president and CEO, Bruce Phipps, 18 yes. years in that position alone. 
Any advice on the way out the door that he offered you? Well, the first thing he said is don't screw it up, okay? <laughs> so I said, duly noted, got it. But he says, you know, he says, Richmond, take your time. And, you know, and I knew where he was going. Don't try to make too big a splash at but, once. But it is so hard, Gene, because <laughs> you see it, you see the greatness that, you know, our, our community can achieve. And it's like, come on, we've got to get there. And so that was the advice he gave me. And by the way, you know, Bruce was, was an amazing, amazing leader. And I, know, I knew Bruce before here because he both sit on the Goodwill Industries International Board of Directors together. Mm -hmm. And that's where I got a chance to meet Bruce. And Bruce did an amazing job of building this Goodwill in his community. He has done an amazing. And for me, uh, Gene, it was an honor to have this role, but he has really positioned us to really accomplish some great things. And without this foundation that we have, I would, I'd have a different conversation with you right now because we wouldn't have the wherewithal, the means, mm -hmm. the resources to really accomplish some of the things I've, I've discussed. So, you know, big, big kudos to, uh, to Bruce uh, for the great work he did over the past 18 years. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Richmond Vincent Jr. from Goodwill Industries of the Valley. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming on. Likewise, thank you. If you have any questions or show suggestions, email us at businessmatters at blueridgepbs.org. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, you can watch them on our website at blueridgepbs.org.